everyone to the Victoria Advocate News Meeting. I'm editor and publisher Chris Cobbler. With me as always to my left. Tony Valandon, city editor. And to my right, uh, Managing Editor Becky Cooper is off of training, being the, even a better journalist, learning about databases and Excel spreadsheets and everything else, all that fun stuff. And behind the camera, Thomas Martinez, Advocate Daily News Meeting Executive Producer. Nice. So let Thomas us know what you think of the stories we're working on, any suggestions you have for stories we should be working on. That's why we come on every weekday to hear from you. It's a beautiful sunny day, probably about, what do you think, about 70, 72? Um, I ran my We marked up to Vella Farms and back, had a great meatloaf buffet lunch. You ran errands mm -hmm. today? No, 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 I ran the air. Oh, okay. And my car coming in. Uh, anyway, you ran the air, just roll down the window. Yeah. But uh, here, I'll pull up the, the budget. Here they are in the video and say hello and you say hello and type in what you think. I'll keep an eye on it while everybody's signing on. I'll ask a trivia question as is our way. Mm -hmm. And Nolan Bushnell, Bushnell is the mastermind behind the groundbreaking video game company Atari, founded in 1972. Mm -hmm. Atari in 72, and I didn't wow. know it went back that far. Yeah, me neither. Um, I guess Pong was somewhere there. Well, I thought Pong was even later in the 70s. And uh, Atari, was Atari, Pong an Atari game back then? It must have been. Pong, I remember Pong was like the game. Everybody wanted to play it that. It was the slowest pace game. Yeah, so incredibly <laughs> slow. And then, then Space Invaders, that was. Space Invaders, <laughs> Pac-Man. I love the Space Invaders was at a movie theater I worked at when I was 19, so we could just play it after ours. Pong, on, on, on. You just opened it up and mm. flipped the switch. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, then Pac-Man. But what the question is, what other famous business did Bushnell found in the 1970s? So what, what famous business was there in the 70s? Hey, Pat. Pat says hello. How are you? Happy birthday, Pat. It's Pat's uh, 75 today. She announced it on Facebook, so I think I can say it there. And uh, her business has been uh, mm. the anniversary. How many years, Pat, for your business? Days gone by. Um, and... Was it your cat or your dog that turns five today? Too, he said. I'm, not, I'm trying to remember all the details, Pat. Uh, forgive me, my, my memory is not what it used to be. Um, so, but what business, famous business, did Bushnell found in the '70s? It was the '70s. Yeah, in the '70s. Yeah, the 70s. Was a Hampton. And it's famous. So I'm just trying to think of a famous business from the '70s. I bet it's. Uh, I bet it's I, alcohol related, though. Yeah, it, it, it probably is not just related to Atari. It's probably something. I bet it's computer related. Do you think it is? Like, uh, well, it's not Dell computers. <laughs> that was Dell, Michael Dell. Was I'm it? trying to think of the computer yeah. uh, company that was. Thank you. 100 here. 100, where are you, Pat? <laughs> I know you're not turning 100. You must be somewhere where it's warm. Where did you go on a trip for your, for your birthday? Um, where would it be 100 already? Are you in Arizona? The no, equator? No. <laughs> uh, that sounds too hot. I'm gonna say Radio Shack. Radio Shack is a yeah, good guess. I'm gonna say. Um, did it start in the seventies? Maybe it did. Yeah. Maybe it did. And now they're now it's all fading out. Are there any Radio Shacks left? Yeah, there's not very many of them. Uh, well, I used to love to own a Radio Shack actually back in the day, <laughs> just to look at the junk. Now I go and then I'd go into Sharper Image and look at the stuff. <laughs> And there was a stone. Every mall had a radio shack. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she's going to see cherry blossoms in D.C. Well, it's not a hundred in in D.C. You can't tell me that. Oh, hundred years old. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. it's not a hundred temperature. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. She the cherry blossoms in D.C. I guess we right when they're when they're blooming already. What? No, they're usually well, wildfires, not. Wildfires. They're okay. not usually blooming already, are they? I thought it was a little later in the spring, but they are pretty. Very pretty. We saw Nicole over spring break a couple of years ago, and about so close to this time of year, and they weren't, well, they were two weeks off of blooming, so maybe they are blooming now. It was like middle of March. Um, but hope you get to see them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I remember when one winter it got so warm in Kansas that uh, it forced a lot of trees to bloom. It really messed them up. So do you have any other guests besides Radio Shack for a 70s company founded um, by, by Nolan Bushnell? IBM would be my other guess. Oh, IBM goes way back. No, I, 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 IBM, IBM goes back to like World War II. Okay. 
That's um, oh, no, they had the big mainframe computers and all that. Com some computer. Computers. Some no. desktop kind of computer would make sense because that was a oh. big thing. To... Was it the Commodore Company? Oh, um, what is the company up in the Dallas area? Well, that uh, Texas Instruments. Yeah, TI. Texas Instruments, but I thought that was uh, what's his name who ran for president, also Ross Pro. Might, might go back a little further than that. Yeah, I think it does too. I think TI goes back. I think it's alcohol related. Why? Just because everything's alcohol related? No, because what? Bushnell. So you think you found um, a Bush Bear? <laughs> no, no. I think it's a type of uh, drink that uh, I s they kept saying it over and over in the movie. I remember. Give me a Bushnell. Type of drink. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I got a, nothing. Was. I bet it's some type of. Alcohol, I bet it's some type of yeah, alcohol. Like a they, vodka. Uh, give me a Bushnell, and they, they, they gave him little drinks. June, do you know? Got any answer? Or Pat saying the cherry blossom just started, but not in full. Yeah, go down to the Washington Mall area when they're blooming. It's it's a pretty spot. You can go to all the Smithsonian. It's like a Disneyland for adults. You can go to all those Smithsonian museums and just spend the week doing lots of stuff for free. Of course, the hotels are there are not free. They're really pricey. Um, but everything everything you can do during the day is for, is free. Dinner's not cheap <laughs> there anywhere. I guess you could eat a, eat a street vendor or something. Try to eat cheaper. But anyway, let's go to the news while we're, while we're thinking about the uh, trivia question. Uh, we got a really good story John is doing about um, a missing... Korean War veteran and his how his remains have finally been brought home. Um, so photos by Evan. Uh, we have a story by Amber on um, looking at the decline in elementary enrollment. It's led, led in part to the closing of the three elementary schools. And um, we've I haven't got, touched base with her. She told me in my email she'd have that ready. And um, and the school closing story she said have that better kind of a transitional story on, on getting what the school district's having to do to uh, prepare for these closings. And they're doing it starting this fall, right? Right, so yeah, fast. That's, that's why they're having to inform teachers, staff, and parents about what's going on. That's the story we're uh, doing is how are they getting them. Doing will that, that impact the 24 bus routes or do you think those will be consolidated too? They will have, they have always, every year the school district struggles with filling getting enough bus drivers. I can't imagine if you're not going to all those schools, maybe the routes will be condensed. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it will actually, maybe that will help a little bit, but they still haven't get the kids where they live to the schools. Um, then we got the uh, regional roundup. Um, all everything going on, all the small towns around us. Um, Kira was at Citizens Medical Center board meeting. Uh, they're talking about um, getting approval from the city to drill an emergency water well to use to cool a hospital in the event the city loses water again, both citizens and DTAR are getting prepared so that, because what really hurt them uh, during the hurricane was losing their water, not just for not just for cooling the hospital, I think it has to do with just even being able to operate. I mean, you have to, you need water to sanitize everything and, and, and keep um, uh, the hospital to right not just to, for people's comfort, but for them to be able to actually continue to do medical procedures. Mm -hmm. um, so that's important. Uh, I could move day one if we need to. Uh, we all, Jessica's over this afternoon, get some daily coverage of the Formosa trial. Mm -hmm. And Amber's got a story about Shiner superintendent, so she's busy, who's retiring in September. She's been with the district about 20 years, Trey mm -hmm. Lawrence. And um, Kira's got a short item on a Free awesome. tree giveaway, which yeah. is good for replacing Hurricane trees. Harvey. That would be a good story later. Oh, they're going to Riverside. Yeah, yeah. Fifty. So, a story on uh, trees since Harvey. Of course, it's our get out section tomorrow, and uh, Elena's. I don't think I see. What was, was it? By Anything as lovely by as Joyce, a tree. Yeah. Joyce but, um, Kilmer. Joyce Kilmer. I don't know. Joyce Billy Kilmer. Yeah, it was a man. Washington Red Joyce quarterback. Kilmer was a man. Malcolm? No. <laughs> All right. Elaine has got a story on the, the Jam Fest, the Art Car Parade, the Film Fest, the Dave. Uh, Some of this will have to hold till. Uh, well, I'll try a lot to of this can hold. 
this is all events this weekend. Every one of those. Well, the the polo and the nay were. Are, oh, the polo's this weekend too. No, it's the six. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and the maybe, benefits maybe the nay. So, all this is not going to be able to get them to get out. Well, <laughs> that's where. Jam Fest, Art Car Parade, and Film Fest are all well. Film Fest, they all have to go. They do. We'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. All right, but it, there's, a, there's so much going on this weekend. So much going on. No. And Joe Fryer's movie review, too, which is... Uh, I'm attached. Mo uh, Hotel Mumbai, I think is what he's talking about. And then, of course, Tony Vasquez is out and about with lots of photos. And uh, let's see, in sports, we've got a feature on uh, the Shiner football coach, athletic director, Stephen Cerny. And... Uh, uh, another signing, Edna's, Edna Athletes going to Shriner, uh, and um, we've got Cowboy star Michael Irvin undergoing testing for throat cancer, and we need to have, we need to have a UH basketball story, story if we can get one, get one, let's call AP if they don't. They don't have it because it should be. I mean, I don't understand why State AP wouldn't have that one. Um, they are a very successful program, but State AP is lacking in a lot of areas. Um, then on State Digest and news, we got a story out of El Paso about uh, the Trump administration temporarily reassigning 750 border inspectors to read to address a growing number of migrants arriving at the border. Many of them Central American families who turn themselves in and seek asylum. Um, then uh, more follow up on the petrochemical fire out of Deer Park. So the Houston Ship Channel has reopened for daytime traffic. And uh, yeah, uh, for the state capitol day, 50 people received on-site booster shots after a page in the White House was diagnosed with whooping cough. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm. I was up there. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. My, what day was that? I was up there. I don't know when he was contagious. I was testifying. <laughs> uh, hopefully not at the same I'll, time. I'll call in sick tomorrow, I think. Then, uh, <laughs> call in sick Saturday. No, tomorrow. Right before the There's a story about <laughs> business groups and LGBT <laughs> rights activists are decrying a number of bills geared toward faith-based exemptions after banding together against the transgender bathroom bill in 2017. So, you know, State Digest actually has quite a few things going on. They also have a story out of Corpus Christi where uh, the chief says an officer shot a man who was mistaken to be a suspect in the robbery of a convenience store. Oh, oops. Said uh, the officer ordered the man to show his hands Tuesday and the man did while holding a lighter which was mistaken for a weapon that prompted the officer to shoot him. Ooh. A lighter? Yeah. Wow. And um, let's see. In Galveston, a woman was sentenced to 35 years in prison for sending her ex-boyfriend on fire. Is that Ooh. a racial-based shooting, a police shooting? Uh, it doesn't say. say. It doesn't mention race or ethnicity, and it just says so it was a mistaken, Texas, mistaken identity. I don't um, think we can afford another black shooting. Yeah. Um, Barbara Bush has her biography out. And in her biography, she says Donald Trump caused her <laughs> angst during the 2016 election and led her to question whether she was still a Republican in the months before she died last year in Houston. Hmm. And uh, hmm. interesting story out of Katie. I think that was in the Houston Chronicle about um, um, what is the feature on the mosque up there, I guess is what I Wow, I wonder who the source is in the Barbara Bush thing. Well, it's her book. Oh, okay. She's got a book oh, out, I think. Wow. Anyway. Um, so, on the Texas Tribune, there's a story about UT faculty and staff are feeling the impact of the university blacklisting Airbnb. So the state money cannot be used to stay at Airbnb because they boycott Israel, although Aaron B, &B says it does not. Um, that's interesting. And um, there's some backlash against the UTEP president 
nominee Heather Wilson saying she has an anti-LGBTQ voting record. And um, then there's the story we should get in about these court decisions that are weak in the Texas open government laws. That's a good one if we've got room to get in. That's a very real issue. All right, so that's a lot. Anything big on the national international scene I've missed yet, Tony, that you've seen coming in? No, but it's still a mystery about why the charges against uh, Jesse Smollett were dropped. I mean, you're following that old case a lot more. Everybody else is too more than I am. Uh, no. I, I, did, I did hear a good man who was all a tizzy the pro, about why. The prosecutor on, on, in an interview yeah. said he thought he was guilty. Yeah. He thought he was guilty. And then, Thinking somebody's guilty and proven it is harder. Yeah. Well, and then for, and then he doesn't even tell. Yeah, the Chicago mayor is all mad about this too. I'm they were sure. never they were never to inform that the, the prosecutor made this decision before he, uh, he he released it. They didn't know. They were kept in the dark. Yeah. And then uh, also too, the other element is the feds are probably investigating that he mailed these threatening letters to himself. So the feds are probably still continuing their investigation. How big a fish to fry. That would maybe that's why. Maybe that's why he was so reserved, yeah. too. That's why Smollett was so reserved when he he didn't. Uh, Swore on his mama, though. Yeah, I thought that was interesting, and um, but it's like. Well, <laughs> and, and our poll question today, I think, is be interesting. Follow up with our email question. Do you think which, which, Smollett do you, which do you use more frequently? Text, email, or neither? Which do you do more? Mm. We'll see. Well, I bet based on, so maybe we can add to that and what's your age? Because I bet if you're asking somebody in their 20s, they would say text. You say I'd somebody say older. somebody in their 20s would be 90 10 text. Yeah. Yeah. It would still probably be pretty heavily based text, though. I think even yeah. those people now. Yeah, you almost have to separate that too for personal use versus work use. Yeah. Yeah. I well, despise. Should, should I say, which do you use more frequently for personal use? Yeah, I think we need Let's to. Let's ask it that way. Yeah, I think we need to point. Yeah, because work, you can't help it. All I do is get an email. But when I'm. That's a good question. When I'm doing it for personal use, text might be pretty close. What was it one time? Because my kids all text me. Uh, we don't email each other. Either. I don't communicate with people unless they text me. I remember thinking when I said this um, during Harvey or in the, or in the wake of it, uh, I said, I said I there are eight, but eight or nine group texts. Yeah. And I said, and Chris is in every damn one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. But the, the trivia question, we'll go back to that. Nolan Bushnell is the mastermind behind the groundbreaking video game company Atari, founded in 72. What other famous business did Bushnell found in the 70s? And one guess. Alcohol related. Some alcohol related, which is wide open. We'll give you that, I guess. And uh, Radio Shack. And the answer is, <laughs> we wouldn't have got this one. Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese? So the now ub ubiquitous. Entertainment restaurant chain was born in 1977 with Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater in San Jose, California. Of course, Chuck E. Cheese is on the way out, isn't it? It's not really... Well, I keep this, saying that, but they, this one never goes away, at least. I guess. I, I guess. thought it was pronounced ubiquitous. Did I say that? I, I thought you said that. ubiquitous. Whatever. <laughs> I don't want to say it again. And that means everywhere, right? Everywhere. Yeah. Omnipresent. Yeah. yeah, I don't think... I mean, there's still a lot of Chuck E. Cheese's out there. Probably so. I guess it's I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese. With, I guess uh, it's more more I think they're on their way out because my kids are long past the Chuck E. Cheese age. Remember that guy, Scott? I just also thought because video games were hurting them. I mean, home video games, so going to play video games with Chuck E. Cheese is not quite the thrill it used to be. It used to be, yeah. yeah they, uh, they probably adapted it <laughs> yeah. with those, like those ski I'll, ball games and stuff where yeah. you get the tickets and you can buy tickets. Yeah, I, remember, I always liked the shooting the basketball. The shooting the basketball. That one guy <laughs> in advertising who started the day I did, Scott, whatever. Yeah. He, 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 didn't, well, anyway, uh, to, re, to reciprocate, I took his, him and his wife and his kids to Chuck E. Cheese. That was expensive <laughs> to buy. 
because uh, I bought the whole big package of two large pizzas and I don't know how many tokens and and he had uh, two or three kids I think yeah. three and they I mean they loved the games so I said yeah just and then uh, Scott was telling him well we need a few coins for the adults I'm like no no I don't need them I'll just go I'll just snatch a coin from one of you if I need want to play it play a game but you know it was fun it was fun I mean you can't go in there without you know, seeing it through the eyes of little kids. Yeah, I mean, same thing with Peter Parker Pizza, right? I mean, I've never been in there. I think yeah. the pizza's better than Peter Parker, but... Which has better pizza? Peter Parker. That is it? I never you don't go to Chuck E. Cheese or Peter Parker for, for the pizza. pizza though, yeah. yeah. Uh, One day, Gabe and I were tired of pizza, and yeah. we went to Peter Parker. It was okay. Yeah. yeah. Change of pace, but... Was that here? Uh, we, yeah, we ended up going back to the pizza yeah. anyway, so... All right, well, we should... <laughs> he just went across the street. <laughs> we should wrap up, but if you have any uh, news tips or want to talk about Chuck E. Cheese, uh, you can tell me a call. I love arcades. Or, going to arcades. Yeah. Give him a call at 574-1222. Peace out. <laughs>